This is Internet Business Mastery, Episode 113. In a world where bosses control your life and thoughts of escape fill your mind, where inspiration seems dead and cynicism rules the masses, you have a desire to break free. You feel the need to take control. Now, there exists a place where the secrets of freedom and wealth are given to those who believe. InternetBusinessMastery.com Free your mind. Hello and welcome to Internet Business Mastery Online at InternetBusinessMastery.com. I'm Sterling. And I'm Jay. And we're here to help you escape the 9 to 5 and live the lifestyle of your dreams by turning your life's passion into a profitable internet business even if you're just getting started today. On this episode of Internet Business Mastery, we discuss the seven internet marketing habits to make 2011 the best year ever. And in the quick tip, we have a great tool for tracking progress with your time and habits. We'd also like to remind you that if you'd like to get a jump start on creating your own profitable internet business using our proven system, you can claim your risk-free trial membership to the Internet Business Mastery Academy by going to freeaudiogift.com. So, Jay, with this new year coming up, what, what's going on? Well, you know, I, it's kind of become a tradition with Internet Business Mastery to do an episode at the beginning of the year. This is our first episode of 2011, and uh, we've, we've always talked about how to make the, uh, you know, how to make this year the best year ever. And I don't know, people might wonder what's like, well, how, how is this year supposed to be the best year ever if last year was the best year ever? <laughs> but progression. It, right. <laughs> and I think that's a, just a great principle to have in mind as you just try to think about, well, what do I want this year to look like for me? I think a, a, a great principle for, for ambitious and entrepreneurial and just, you know, success focused people is to always have a future that is bigger than your past and, and try to, you know, take things to the next level. And, uh, you know, so in, in that vein, that's what we want to talk about on this uh, episode today is how to make 2011 the best year ever. And specifically bringing it down to this idea of habits that we've mentioned a little bit. And we'll be talking about that some more. But, uh, you know, one, one thing that I've really been focusing on recently, not, not only in 2011, but I want to keep focusing on in two, or in 2010, but I want to keep focusing on in 2011 is just spending more time discovering the things that fulfill me the most and that I'm the, you know, that are my strengths, that I have the best value to offer, not only to myself, but to those around me. And then, uh, you know, spending more time doing those things because I firmly believe that if I do that, not only will I make more money, but more importantly, I'll be more fulfilled and I'll deliver better value to other people. So that's, uh, I mean, that's not a very specific like goal, but that's just a, a, I guess, a guiding principle that I wanted, a couple guiding principles that I wanted to share as I think about what 2011, what I want it to hold for me. How about you? Yeah, that's, that's a big one for me as well, making sure, you know, I'm working on unique ability and things that are, you know, definitely fulfilling for me. And then the other is like just fundamentals. It's an interesting thing now after, you know, uh, the amount of time we've now been doing internet business, five, six years or so, um, it, you know, you start realizing that, you know, there's times when you're just trying to shoot ahead. And now as we look at things, there's a lot of little fundamental things in the business that can be cleaned up or make sure the structure is just really strong. Where are the holes in the system? Where where can things be, you know, tight and as well as even traffic. What are the fundamentals of this stuff? Rather than going, oh my gosh, what's the new shiny new thing? It's like, well, before we can do that kind of stuff, let's see what the base fundamentals are and make sure those are all in place before we start trying something that's maybe not tested yet or everybody's talking about, but we don't know if it works yet, really. It's, you know, like this year for me, uh, other than the unique ability thing, will be making sure fundamentals and base business practices are completely in place before uh, rushing off into the the next wild, crazy new thing. Right. I mean, continual success often does come down to some very fundamental ideas and habits and systems that uh, need to be in place and that, uh, you know, they they recur and and need to be revisited and looked at at times. And uh, that actually, I think, we'll be talking a lot about fundamental things and some of the habits we're going to talk about in today's episode. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. And now, the feature segment. All right, so as we mentioned, we want to talk about how to make 2011 the best year ever for you. 
And one of the things that we've really been noticing this year and something we've been learning about in, in one of our masterminds and coaching groups is, is the power of habits. This is something that we've learned a lot from Dan Sullivan of Strategic Coach and been implementing and, and looking and studying and, and trying in our own lives over this year. And it's something that's really made a, a big impact and that we personally in our own businesses and lives plan on continuing to put into practice. And we've talked a little bit about this before, but I, you know, it, it bears it really merits kind of going back over a little bit some of the the basic principles of this idea of habits. You know, one thing that's very powerful that uh, that I think I read or listened to in a, in a Dan Sullivan book is he said, you know, a lot of people feel like when they're not making the progress that they want to make, that it means that they don't have enough self discipline, and that's that's really actually just not true. We all have plenty of discipline, but the problem lies in the fact that often we are disciplined to habits that are not in line with the goals that we want to achieve. And so the key to experiencing increasing amounts of success is to form new habits, new habits that are now in line with, you know, the places that we want to go, the things that we want to achieve, the goals that we want to reach. And so I just want to review quickly the, you know, the, the basic principles of, of habit forming, because if, if we do take that, those ideas and ambitions that we have and, you know, the awareness, you know, if we see a place in our life or our business that, we, that in our life or our business that we realize, okay, maybe our habit isn't quite what it should be, we need to take that awareness and, you know, what we call willpower and discipline, rediscipline ourselves, retrain ourselves to new habits, because once we've retrained ourselves, it no longer takes you no longer have to try to be aware of it or, or to muster up any kind of discipline or, or willpower. It, now it just becomes something that you naturally do. And, uh, you know, an, an example that we, that we always, uh, share and a habit that I formed this year and still do is the whole green smoothie thing as a way to get more greens and, and some of this nutritious stuff into my body in the morning. It was really weird at first and I would eat, you know, other stuff for breakfast that wasn't quite as healthy. But now it's just something natural that I do is make this for myself without even thinking. And, and when I, you know, that, that strange, odd feeling of I'm drinking spinach and all this other stuff, now it's not even something that I think about. It's just something that I do. And the way that you form a new habit is by doing it and tracking it for 21 days straight. That's how long it takes to kind of reform those pathways in our brain and whatever muscle memory might be involved or, you know, just make it part of a daily routine is that if you can do it for 21 days straight, you'll find that you no longer have to think about it very hard. And the key is you've got to not just do it, but you've got to track it because, you know, that's how you're going to keep yourself accountable and know that you actually have been doing it. And, you know, what's best is if you can make it part of a routine where maybe at the same time every day you go into doing that thing and you, you do it and you track it on, uh, you know, on a calendar or whatever the case may be for yourself that you did do that thing. And then, I, I, and then after 21 days, you can move on to the next habit and think, you know, how many habits you could form over this next new year if every 21 days you chose a new habit to focus on. And, you know, instead of having this usual New Year's resolution thing where all of a sudden we have a list of, 10 or 20 things that we want to change right now, you know, oh, I want to lose weight. So I'm going to go in and re-sign up for my gym membership. And I want to, you know, read more books. I'm going to start reading more books right now. You know, it's hard to change more than one habit at a time. So you need to keep yourself to, you know, keep it simple. Just, just do one habit. But if you do a new habit every three weeks, then things are really going to add up. And just as a, you know, a, a, a quick, uh, you know, so, so just remember, it's not about self-discipline. It's about forming those new habits that are in line with your goals and making that a regular part of, of, uh, of your systems and the things that you do. Yeah, for me, it's, it's about the scheduling and consistency. Like when I start forming a habit, I schedule a time every day to practice the habit. Now, preferably, that'll be the same time every day so that, I don't know, like it becomes part of my mind just knows that, oh, oh it's almost 12, I've got to do this. And right. after it is a habit, I should even uh, I shouldn't even have to schedule it. It should just come naturally, let's say, uh, because I've just been doing it every single day at that particular time uh, for the 21 days. But at first, I'll practice the habit based on my schedule. Even if it's something I only it'll only take me five minutes a day to do, I still schedule it and make sure I do it consistently for that first 21 days. Yeah, consistency is very powerful. I'm glad you brought that up because you know that's that that it is it, it is that consistency that does retrain our brain and retrain our way of thinking. Just a quick example of one that I'm working on right now 
is that, uh, in fact, I'm going to have to turn it off right now because it's about to go off in the middle of, it's a timer here. You can probably hear that beeping. And I, uh, what I've been doing recently is I've been setting that for 50 minutes. And, you know, because every time I go and see my massage therapist or a doctor, chiropractor, whatever, they're always, you know, I talk about how I sit at a computer all day and they're always saying, oh, make sure that you get up regularly and kind of stretch and and, you know, loosen up your back because you get really rigid. And, and I definitely do end up with back pain and stuff if I don't uh, take care of myself in that way. So every 50 minutes, I have a timer to remind me, stand up just for a few minutes, walk around a little bit, do a few stretches, maybe get a drink of water. And then, you know, now we can sit back down and continue working again. And that's uh, been really, really helpful, actually, just for my well-being and makes it easier for me to think and stuff. So that's just an example of, you know, a habit that I'm working on right now. Well, and, and one thing that, uh, when I, especially when I got started, was just a, a simple thing for me was making Google Calendar my homepage. And that way, that's where everything is, my business and personal schedule. So having it be a habit that anytime I open up a browser, the first thing I see is my schedule certainly helped me put it in my mind that my schedule was going to be a, you know, a big part of my life and that I was going to be able to see that every day and see what's scheduled there and not be able to claim I forgot something because I see it so often. So that was like, for me, one of the first fundamental things was making it so that, uh, you know, I have access and I can see a calendar, which, you know, seems uh, for me at first, it seemed a little strange because I'm like, I'm an entrepreneur. I do what I want when I want. But, <laughs> right. And I, I pretty much did that for a first couple of years, just kind of like, oh, I, I'm going to go for a walk now instead of, you know, and I just didn't have schedules and stuff. But it made it a lot hard, harder, and and definitely my business certainly went to the second, the next level when I started actually being able to schedule. Now, if I want to schedule, for instance, today I'm going with a friend to lunch, and then we're going to a gun range, which is very odd for me. But I'm, you know, like I'm doing these things. But then I all I did was move the things that are scheduled around that, so they're still there, and maybe just today they happen to be moved a little bit, but. You know, I've still got that schedule, and that's that was my first kind of like fundamental habit that I had to create was getting that schedule a part of my life. Yeah, it's ironic that uh, kind of the more structured and 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 scheduled and tracking that you get into that get get into your life, uh, you actually find that there is more freedom as an entrepreneur because yeah. you're making deliberate <laughs> decisions. All right, so let's go ahead and start. You know, what we want to do is share seven habits. Seven internet marketing habits or habits for internet business, uh, for internet entrepreneurs. And we just, you know, we want to ask you to, as you listen through these, maybe find one that you can, that, that's appropriate for you right now that you can start this new year off with putting into action for yourself. We've broken it up into different, it's broken up into different uh, categories. So, you know, we're, we're going to start with a couple of what we call starter habits. So if you're just brand new to this whole thing, just starting out, these might be ones you want to consider. Then we'll have a couple traffic habits, a couple time habits, and then an advanced habit at the end. That And so these are, again, all for you just to consider and try to find one that might be appropriate uh, for you to give you some ideas of what you can apply for yourself. So let's start out with the starter habits here. Habit number one, and we've mentioned this many times, but that's because it's so, so important. Really, not only if you're a beginner and just starting out, but even you know as you progress along, even if you're intermediate or advanced at doing internet business, and that is to be very proactive about your learning and to, and to put into action this just-in-time learning idea of only spending time looking at newsletters and blogs and courses and things that you're going to be putting into action right away. You know, don't have this whole deluge of, of blogs that you're looking at every day just to, you know, that's filling your brain with all these ideas and guilt of all the things that you're not getting done and probably stuff that you won't put into action maybe for years to come. You know, be very deliberate about your learning. And, and the way that you make this a habit is, I mean, maybe you set a, first of all, you, one thing you can do is set a t aside your your uh your, your time where you spend your learning time and say okay well it's going to be this for this half hour today or for this hour today and then plan ahead it's like okay well what am i going to spend learning during that time don't have it just be this thing of oh i'm going to open my blog reader and just see where it takes me i mean every once in a while giving yourself that freedom to go wherever yeah that's how you come up with new ideas but if you haven't been in the habit of this proactive just in time learning then maybe you need to cut out all that you know just flowing freely going wherever learning be more structured, more consistent, and then track on a daily basis. Maybe give yourself a score of how well did I do today? Did I allow myself to wander a little too much or was I very deliberate about my learning? And then track that for 21 days and see if you can't make that a habit for yourself. 
Yeah, honestly, this habit was the key to any success I've had since I was a knowledge junkie. I now try to even stop somebody from telling me some piece of knowledge, at least in a detailed way, about something I don't need to know yet. I'll stop them and ask them to tell me what they think is the next step for me based on where I am instead. That's a great idea. I love that. Yeah, it's it's really kind of a weird one. thing to do because somebody's like getting all excited telling you something and, <laughs> yeah. and I'm like going, like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I've got to tell you, I, I, I'm not going to be able to, this won't be useful to me because I won't remember it tomorrow. Knowing right. where I am, what do you think the next thing is for me to do? And the funny thing is, is most of the time they instantly forget that they just got stopped telling something cool and go, ooh, now, now I get to tell you this. So... Absolutely. All right. The second habit, and this is again, another starter habit is, uh, and this goes back to consistency that Sterling mentioned earlier, and that is to consistently work on your business and schedule the times that you're going to do it. So, you know, the way you're going to make the most progress is just you know, every, and maybe this is just Monday through Friday, but whatever it's going to be, and, and maybe it's in the evenings. And this is especially important because a lot of people when they're starting out, they are, you know, they might be working a full-time job still. And so they only have a part-time schedule where they can work on their business. So the thing that you're going to find that's going to make the biggest impact is if you can say, okay, well, I'm going to work on my business, you know, every day, Monday through Friday for an hour or a half an hour. And it's going to be from uh, nine to nine thirty after I put the kids to bed or whatever the case may be, or from nine to 10, or it's going to be first thing when I wake up in the morning and you know, I'm going to get up a little earlier and it's going to be from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. And then I can go exercise and eat breakfast and things like that. So whatever works for you in your schedule, but make it so that you're consistently working on your business and even scheduling it in your life. Yeah, again, even if it's it's a five minute thing you have to do or in, like he was saying, uh, if you're just if all you have is 30 minutes, make sure it's on a schedule so that you can see it so that it's it's there. It's like it's real because it's scheduled somewhere. I mean, that was the thing for me in my head. I was going, oh, I've got to do this, 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 and this. But once I finally had it, <laughs> like with the Google Calendar, like each of the different types of calendar can be color coded and stuff. And so I know like if I have a new habit, I have it a certain color. So when I look at the schedule for the week, it, it just seems real and solid. Like, okay, I know from five to five thirty I'm doing this thing. I've scheduled it. It's there. It, it you know, there's a physical representation of something that I've chosen to do. So if this is the habit you want to put into action for yourself, what you want to do is find a time to sit down and for the next 21 days, schedule out when you're going to work on your business. Now, something might come up and you might have to switch it. That's okay. Like Sterling said earlier, you know, sometimes he does have to shift it around, but still you're being deliberate about it. So schedule that out and then track on a daily basis. Did I stick to my schedule and did I stay consistent working on my business? All right, let's go into the third habit. Now we're getting into a couple traffic habits. So if you feel like, you know, yeah, you know, traffic is something that I could use more of in my business, which, you know, all of us could probably use more traffic in our business. <laughs> yeah. Pretty obvious. So uh, the, the, the habit here is to create a content creation schedule and be consistent with it. I mean, our, our uh, business and our audience and our lists and our income have all grown the most when we've been very consistent about creating our our show, our audio show, the podcast, and you know, goes out in a number of other channels as well. This, uh, you know, we we put out three episodes a month, and you know, Sterling even plans ahead when we're going to record those, when they're going to come out. We started being very consistent about having them come out on Thursday, so that the audience knew what to expect, and and that's just helped a lot in keeping us. Because the content is what attracts the attention of our market and immediately pulls them in. And we show up in iTunes, we show up in Google, we show up in YouTube, we show in these different places. And that's how we get traffic and then bond with our audience because of this great content we're putting out. It's the same thing, whether, whether you're doing audio or, or if you're, you know, if you're doing blogging, same thing, you know, schedule that you'll be consistent and do, you know, just decide what's it going to be? Am I going to blog once a week, two times a week, three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday? and stick to that schedule because it's that consistent creation of fresh content that's going to create a very loyal audience for you that's going to be ready to buy, but also going to attract the attention of new people in all of these search engines out there. And, you know, even if you're, if you're not doing some of the more advanced syndication stuff maybe that we've talked about and not getting all fancy with your search engine optimization, that's okay. Don't worry about that. Right now, just worry about creating content on a regular basis, whether that's audio, video, or blogs. Choose one and be consistent with it. So if this is the habit that you want to form for yourself, just choose one of those three and then sit down and say, okay, for the next three weeks, here's what my schedule is going to be. And, you know, just as a suggestion, it would be, you know, if you're going to do audio, I would do once a week. If you're going to do video, I might do once or twice a week. If you're going to do blogging two or three times a week. 
and, uh, and set up those times and then track them on a calendar. All right, habit number four is to reach out to a current or new partnership relationship daily. I mean, there's so much I mean, in business that is about relationships. And one of the fastest ways to grow your business is to have you know, people that you're partnering up with in strategic ways, whether that's to do cross promotions or to have them be an affiliate for you, or whether that's they're creating content for your site or you're creating content for their site or a mastermind relationship or a business partnership relationship. These kinds of relationships, they hold us accountable. They bring us new opportunities. They bring us new traffic you know, very. It's a fast way to get new traffic and new uh, attention to to other uh, other audiences and other markets. So, you know, maybe sit down and decide. Okay, well, here are the ten most important types of relationships I could form right now. I need ten new. Uh, I need ten new sites that I could go and guest blog on and get a relationship with those bloggers, so that eventually they will let me guest blog on their site. Or I need ten new people that could become affiliates for my business. Or I need uh, to find five people and, and on a daily basis reach out to one of them on a mastermind kind of basis to help keep each other accountable. So decide what those partnerships or relationships are and then at least you know, every day, just track this, do something to reach out to one of those to a new partnership or a current or current partnership to just kind of keep things moving along. Yeah, that's like the main way I use Skype is for any little partnerships. And and by the way, there's a lot of people finding this type of thing in our Academy Mastermind community. But either way, find some way to help each other stay on track. I mean, for me, the first thing, if I was uh, basically pretty new or brand new, would be finding kind of that accountability partner. Just one person even going, hey, did you stay on track? Or here's what I did today, like to inspire each other and get that started. Um, that would be the first thing I would do. Yeah, that's a good one. Like find that person and then each of you sets a goal and tracks. Okay, for the next three weeks, every day at the end of the day, we're going to check in with each other for five minutes or whatever the case may be. That's a great idea. All right, so the next habit is habit number five, and this is a time habit. So now we have a couple time habits for you. So habit number five is to track your time daily and how you use it. This is a habit that uh, we both started forming, I don't know, maybe it's been a couple years now. But it's just had a huge, huge, huge impact on our business because so many things stem from that. Not only, you know, the consistency that we've talked about, but also tracking how we use our time to make sure that, you know, it's in line with the goals that we have and make sure that we're spending enough time on on money making uh, activities and not just all on other random, you know, cleanup and outsourcing and things that may seem important, but then they lead us away from the things that we actually enjoy. Or, you know, so we've we've used tracking our time for so many things to to uh, spend more time on our unique abilities, on the things that fulfill us, uh, to make sure that we're not working too hard and that we actually stop ourselves when we hit whatever our current goal is and we step away then for the rest of the day and spend time with our, uh, our family or, or our friends or, or doing other you know, personal activities. So just first thing to do is to get in the habit of tracking your time daily. So get some kind of calendar or whatever system works for you and uh, and then, you know, as you're going and the thing that we always do is at the beginning of the week or especially at the beginning of the day, we try to track out, well, here's how I'm going to use my time today. And that might change over the day a little bit, but then at least you're making the decision beforehand, you're being deliberate. And then at the end of the day, you can look at the actual and kind of compare and then track whatever goals you might be working on at the time, whether that's consistency or whether that's how you're using your time or whether that's, you know, how much time was spent on your, uh, what you consider your strengths and unique abilities, whatever the case may be. So start tracking your time daily and how you've used it throughout the day. Yeah, I try and think about it as, you know, did the work I do on a daily basis get me closer to my target? Or were they a waste of time? Or was it information I didn't even need yet? Uh, was it even a, a task that I did now instead of, uh, you know, something that needs to be done next week, and I put it in place of something that needed to be done now. I mean, a lot of this is just what is actually the next thing to do and making sure to do that instead of being ahead of yourself. So if this is the habit you want to put into action, just, you know, choose a tool, choose a calendar and start that at the, whether, you know, at the beginning of the week and even at the beginning of the day, decide how you think you're going to use your time and then track what the actual is. And, you know, maybe if you don't worry about any metrics or anything, that's fine. Just getting the habit of actually tracking and planning that time out is going to be very powerful for now. The next habit is also a time habit. This is habit number six, and that is to measure how much of your time you spend on your most high value actions. So once you are in the habit of tracking your time, 
what you want to do is, you know, the, the, the first thing to do is decide, well, what are my most high value actions right now? And a high value action are, you know, the things that, you know, are, are, you know, that will directly lead to bringing in uh, new money, for instance, or the things that are, you know, based on your strengths or the things that you, your business, mo- you know, that are in, in line with your biggest business goals right now. Maybe that's bringing in new traffic. Maybe that's just getting your business started. Maybe that's, you know, learning the ropes of this whole internet business thing so you can get started. So whatever your most high value action is, wherever you're at in this whole process, measure how much of your time each day you spend on that. So, you know, if you're just starting out and you decide, well, right now I, I need to kind of learn some of the fundamentals of internet business and how this whole thing works. It's like, okay, well, plan out how much time you spent each day learning those kinds of things. Or if it's, well, I need more traffic for my business. Well, decide what those two or three things are that you're going to do for traffic and measure how much of your time each day you spend on doing that thing. And this is important because often we get very reactionary in our businesses and we've got brush fires that show up or things that feel very urgent because, you know, an email comes into our inbox or somebody pings us on Skype or our phone rings or uh, our business partner you know, bring something. I was like, oh my gosh, did you notice something that happened over here? And all of a sudden, you know, everything seems urgent. Everything seems important. And you can get to the end of the day and find, you know, realize that you were just very reactionary that whole day. And you didn't spend any time on high value actions because it was all in cleaning up messes rather than setting aside a block of focused time where it's like, okay, you know what? I'm going to turn things off and I'm going to focus on, well, I'll focus on whatever this, the case, uh, whatever this is. Um, as an example, like for us, some of the most high value actions that we can spend time on is, uh, you know, creating content, uh, whether that's inside of the academy, whether that's, uh, you know, recording a show like this or, or writing blog posts because that brings us traffic and that builds the relationship with our audience. Or, uh, some of the, you know, high value actions would be reaching out to new or potential partners is an important one for us as well. So just to give you a couple examples. So start measuring how much of your time every day. So that that probably means starting the day by deciding, well, what are my most, you know, the three most high value actions in my business right now? And then measuring, you know, throughout that week, how much time you spend on those things. And then do that for three weeks and it'll now be a habit. And you'll find your brain is much more attuned to thinking about, you know, not getting caught up in the reactionary cleanup messes of your business, but remembering to also spend time you know, actually doing those things that you love that fulfill you and that are going to bring you money in the end as well. Well, and I'm going to give just a little side note because it's something that I did just yesterday and it gets me excited every time I do it. I'm learning every single thing I can right now about some Facebook stuff that I'm working on. And so I'll go through different courses and just bring in all this information. But what I used to do is like, let's say it's four videos. I would watch it all, make some notes here and there and just watch it all. And then I'd feel real proud that I got through the whole thing. But now I completely do it differently. If I've got an hour of time, my goal isn't to finish the course, which is what it used to be. I just, I want to finish it. Now I'll have that knowledge. Now it's like if two minutes into the video, they say, okay, so you need to create this landing page. I pause and set up completely set up the implementation of that landing page. And I will not go on to the next. I, it's paused until that is done, which is a big right. thing to remember that, especially when you're starting, if you're doing a piece, you know, you're going through some sort of an information product or like, again, we talk about in the academy, when you're going through that, you don't move on to the next piece of audio or next video until you complete the tasks in the one you're currently in. That is just like the total key to getting this stuff started and actually having things work and and having even all these different habits mean something is you know you're not getting information for just the sake of information you've got to implement and take action instantly just a little side note but it's it's an important one i think absolutely all right habit number 7 is kind of an advanced habit it's uh it's it's kind of a traffic habit and a time habit and and just a good habit to have in your business and that is to spend time daily working on something that will bring in new money. You know, we're, we're in this business because we want more freedom, we want more fulfillment, and part of that is, you know, making the money that we need to keep our business afloat, to, make the, to, to be able to buy the things that we want, to establish the, life, the lifestyle that we want. But uh, we can get caught up in all the different facets of our business and sometimes forget to make money or do the things that will lead us to money. You know, maybe it is that we spend four hours going through a course and feeling real good, you know, about ourselves because we got through the course. But did we spend any time today actually implementing something that's going to bring in that new money? And something we've talked about before is that there's four 
main areas that bring new money to your business. And this is how we do all of our goal setting and all of our, you know, setting objectives and, and planning out our, our priorities for ourselves and our team or on a daily, weekly, quarterly, even yearly basis is that we break things down into one of these four areas. And that is you can do things to bring in new traffic to your business. Obviously, if more people are coming into the sales funnel, it leads to new money on the end. You can convert more of the traffic that you're already getting. So if more people are converting onto your list, uh, onto your email list, or more pre- people are converting to actually buy off of your sales page or whatever, and more people are, are clicking on your ad on AdWords, you know, more conversions moves more people through the sales funnel and leads to more money. You can create new value or a new product. So you can, you know, for your, for your current audience, for your current market. So you can say, well, I'm going to start a new coaching course or I'm going to create a new ebook that I can sell them or create new, uh, you know, new content that you can sell. Or you can work on retaining or retaining your current customers, maybe whether that's in a membership site or, you know, turning them into repeat buyers rather than just having them buy one thing for you. And so increasing the lifetime value of every customer, meaning how much money do they spend with your business over the lifetime that they're involved with your business. So doing something on a daily basis in one of those areas, traffic, conversion, new value or retention will then eventually lead to more money in your business. And so it's a good habit to get into to paying attention. Well, am I spending consistent amount of time doing one of those things rather than again getting caught up in the reactionary things of my business or clean up things or other things that may feel good and seem productive, but in the end, you know, we we need to make money in our business to make our goals happen as well. So the, if you want to put this habit into action for yourself, then you would just need to decide, okay, over the next three weeks, every day, I'm going to spend time in one of these four areas. Maybe you choose one of the four areas. Maybe you decide, well, I want to work on new traffic for the next three weeks. That's the, the money thing that I'm going to do. So track that for the next three weeks. Or maybe you decide, I'm going to work on conversion for the next three weeks. And so then track that for the next three weeks. I do at least one thing to increase conversion this, uh, today. And then eventually, you'll just, again, retrain your brain to think in that way. All right. So there you go. There's seven internet marketing habits to make 2011 the best year ever. And you know, there might be another one that you're thinking of for yourself and that's fine too. But we wanted to give you seven ideas so you can put that, you know, the next 21 days, put something into action, track it. Remember, it's not about not having enough self-discipline. It's about retraining, redisciplining yourself to habits that are in line with the goals that you want. So if you're just starting out, one of the two habits you can think about is doing proactive just-in-time learning or consistently working on your business and scheduling the time the way you use your time. If you need a traffic habit right now, content creation scheduling would be a good habit or reaching out to current or new partnership relationships on a daily basis. If you need a a good time habit because you're overwhelmed or you're not very happy about the way you're using your time, one habit would be to track your time daily and how you use it. Another one would be to measure how much of your time you spend on your most high value actions. And then if you want a kind of a more advanced habit, uh, just a good habit wherever you're at in your business would be to spend, to track and make a habit out of spending time daily working on something that will bring in new money, whether that's traffic, conversions, new value, or retention. But whatever you do, we just want to challenge you to put into action a new habit for yourself over the next 21 days and then make a habit out of making habits. Because think of if you did this every 21 days, by the end of 2011, all the new habits you'll have retrained for yourself, all the progress you'll have made and the new heights that you will reach in your success and your fulfillment. So we're wishing you to have the best 2011, the best making 2011 the best year ever, and we're excited to hear about what progress you make. It's time for the Internet Business Quick Tip. All right, well, this uh, quick tip for this episode is related to all this habit stuff that we've been talking about. And in fact, uh, we've kind of alluded to this particular tool already, and that is using Google Calendar to track how you use your time, track ha- track the habits that you uh, that you're working on. And if you were to to bring up either of our Google Cal's right now, and, and Sterling mentioned earlier in this episode that he now has his show up, you know, first thing when he uh, opens a browser, just boom, it's right there in front of him all the time, reminding him. And I have mine uh, open as well all day long. But what you would see is you'd see you know a, a schedule throughout the day and throughout the week of how we're going to use our time. If you looked back to like last week, you'd see exactly how we used all of our time, you know, up in the, uh, in the, up at, at the top where you can put down, you know, uh, I guess what they call them is events, like all day events. I use that all the time to track, kind of put a note about that particular day, how I used that day, maybe how much time I worked, how much of that, what percentage of that time I feel like I spent on high value activities, for instance, or if there's some goal or habit I'm working on, I'll track that up in the area at the top of that particular day in the all day events area. So Google Cal can be really, really powerful because you you have different calendars, you can color code it. 
Uh, if you're tracking the different ways you're using your time, I mean, you'd see different colors of when we have stuff where we're working, Sterling and I are working together, or then, uh, you know, I have a different color for stuff where I am working on high value activities or, uh, you know, different times where I'm working on, if I'm working on like cleaning up messes and outsourcing and other little busy work of the business that needs to be done, but you know, it's not as a high value activity. I have a different color for that. And, and so all, you know, just a lot of really powerful features. So we just want to encourage you to check that out. Google Calendar can be very powerful and you can obviously access it from mobile devices and anywhere you're at and stuff like that. Uh, but that's, uh, something and we'll actually be talking a lot more about how we use Google Calendar in a uh, time management course that we're going to be putting together, a productivity and time management course coming out in 2011. Uh, but we wanted to bring that up uh, right now as a tool as you're going into the new year, forming new habits that you can check out for using to, uh, to track your own time usage and habits as you move forward. Now, if you'd like dozens of other resources such as this one, you can find them in the Internet Business Mastery Academy, along with video tutorials showing you exactly how we use them. To get a 30-day no-risk trial membership to the Internet Business Mastery Academy, visit freeaudiogift.com. That's it for this episode of Internet Business Mastery. Until next time, we wish you ultimate success in your Internet business. You've been listening to the iconoclasts of the 9 to 5 and the purveyors of freedom and fulfillment, Sterling and Jay. Sterling and Jay invite you to discover one of their most popular audio programs ever. The Three Pillars of Designing Your Ultimate Internet Lifestyle. Visit freeaudiogift.com now and sign up for the free weekly Internet Business Mastery email newsletter. And you'll get instant access to this life-changing audio presentation. Pull directly from the content of the acclaimed Internet Business Mastery Academy membership community. Go now to freeaudiogift.com. Internet Business Mastery. Free your mind.